So we're solving again the aqua spa hydrolux product mix problem. And uh, we formulated first the mathematical model, which tells us we want to decide a uh, number of units of aqua spas and number of hydroluxes to produce in order to maximize profit subject to these constraints. This is the mathematical model. Then we implemented this model in Excel, and this is the implementation. We have the, the values of decision values. Let's put here one and two, for example. And the, these functions here calculate the total profit, which is our objective that we would like to maximize, and these three resource consumptions, pumps, labor hours, and feet of tubing. And these three values, would like to keep them no more than uh, respectively these three values. And uh, now in this video, I would like to use Excel Solver, which is an algorithm that can find a solution that satisfies these constraints and, of course, keeps the values non-negative, as these last two constraints say, and maximizes the profit. So how do we do this in Excel? So in Excel, there is a, a simple solver that can handle um, uh, small problems. And to, uh, you will not find it by default. Normally, it is somewhere under data uh, tab or there is an add-ins tab here, but it is not enabled by default. In order to enable it, just once in, on your computer, you have to do something like this. You have to go to File and Options, and then under Options, you need to go to Add-ins, and in Add-ins, you have to find at the bottom Excel Add-ins and click Go. It's a little bit long sequence of things. And then here, you'll see a list of add-ins and the solver add-in, if it is disabled, you need to enable it. You have to select the checkbox next to solver add-in. Once you do this, notice what happens here now. If I click OK, the solver add-in appears here as the last, uh, uh, well, last uh, option. And now we can use the solver. Uh, you only need to do it once on your computer and uh, to enable it. If you, if you already see the solver, you don't need to do this step. This is, of course, on Windows, on, um, on um, 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 Macs, or uh, on older version of Office. What you needed to do is go to a Tools menu, right? Tools, and under Tools, there is Add-ins, and there is, again, the same option to enable Excel Add-in, and it should install. If you have an Office under Mac, under, uh, on an Apple computer, then uh, you can enable your solver as well. So once we do this, we click, we have to have this implementation of the model, uh, mathematical model, linear model. We have to click solver, and we get this window where there are certain elements we need to enter. So uh, this solver window, it gives you a few parameters. And I hope you will recognize there are the three elements of the optimization models that we had before defined, right? There is, notice, set objective. Objective is what we want to maximize or minimize. So it's this total profit, 350x1 plus 300x2, right? So here we click, and then we have to select a reference. Now, you might be tempted to select 350 and 300, but this is not the objective. These are just numbers that are in the objective function. The objective function is total profit, which is calculated here at this number, right? This 950, remember, underneath there is a sum product formula that calculates the total profit. So you have to select the reference to the cell where total profit is calculated, right? Then you have to decide, do you maximize or minimize? And of course, we're maximizing now, so we leave the max selected. And then you click here, and it says, by changing variable cells. Well, this is where you have to specify which are, which are the decision variables. So we selected them, right? We select the yellow cells because in the yellow cells, we have the values of decision variables, how many units of aqua spas and hydrolux to produce. This is a very important selection. So suppose if I were to select this and then click solve, the solver would mess up these numbers. We would change all these numbers because you're t telling it, change those if you like to maximize profit. Right? This is not what we can change, really. What we can change is decision variables, one, this one and two, the value of x1 and value of x2. Right? And then what we need to also say is, well, you cannot change these values as, as, as you like. You have to respect some constraints. And these constraints, if you recall, right, were the, well, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, pumps constraint, labor constraint, and feet of tubing 
constraint, right? So they are uh, these three values. We want them to be less than or equal than these three available uh, availabilities, right? So to, in order to add the constraints, we we have a list here that is initially empty, and there is a way to add constraints, change the existing ones, or delete. Right? And there's also a way to reset the whole model if you just want to delete everything. So if I click Add, I, uh, it asks me for one constraint, and you can select one cell reference for the left-hand side, and then you can decide is it less than or equal. There are other options for equal or greater than or equal. You can ignore the other options for now. Right? So our constraint is x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 100. We select the first option, and then we enter you don't enter 200 here, there is a value here, right? So this is reference and this is reference. This is the used pumps and this one is available pumps, right? And I could have added it like this. However, there is an even better way since all three constraints are of the type less than or equal, then instead of doing this, I will delete this and I will enter these three numbers, pumps, labor, and tubing, I want them to be less than or equal, delete this, and these three numbers. What this is now doing, it says each of those numbers has a corresponding number on the right, right? and you make the solver is asked to make sure each of those numbers is less than or equal than the corresponding number in the, the second reference. Right? So with one line, if I click OK now, with one line, I added three constraints because this is saying D5 to D7, so it's actually three cell references, less than or equal E5, E7, this is these three references, right? So I've added three constraints. Because the variables are non-negative, we can select here, make unconstrained variables non-negative, right? So this is actually going to ensure the last two constraints. And one last thing we have to select here, because we have a linear model where all functions are linear, we can actually use a very powerful linear solver. GRG would also work, but it works, is made for nonlinear problems, and these are harder to solve, and the method is not as reliable as the simplex method. Simplex method is for linear problems, LP stands for linear problems. Once you do this, we are ready to obtain the solution of this problem. So if you click Solve now, the solver uh, solves the problem because it's a small problem. It solves it almost instantaneously, and it provides you with a solver results window. The important thing to read here is solver found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. It's very important to check this uh, condition, that is this message, because in some cases you might get an error. And then if you click OK, there will be some numbers here, but these numbers will not make any sense because there was an error. You have to see that solver found an optimal solution, that optimality conditions and feasibility conditions are satisfied. And then you can be sure this is the best course of action that uh, Blue Ridge uh, company can actually adopt. So you see that we obtained here a value x1, 122, and 4x2, 78, obtained it without using a graphical method, without doing a lot of work, just using an algorithm, the simplex method uh, for linear programming. And notice this is, of course, the same solution we obtain uh, using other methods like the graphical method, because this is a unique optimal solution.